Why, hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock and this is footage from the day I got sick. I am getting better little by little, but yeah, this was the day I got sick. I went out in the rain to take pictures and shoot some video and came home and just had like really bad cold for the last week and a half. And sound, sounds like I still have it, right? Well, I did decide to draw some trees during that time when I was sitting on the sofa and this is what I came up with. Sorry, the graphite is very reflective. It looks much better in real life. And I decided to do another drawing with trees and plants so I could show you how to render different textures. And I'm gonna have a whole bunch of different tips in this video for doing that. But if you're interested in a class with like the real time footage of the entire drawing, let me know if there's enough people, then I'll turn that into a class. Otherwise, that will just go by the wayside and we'll just have these 14 sections of parts of that drawing so that I can show you how to do some textures. So let's get rolling. So there is more footage from my day out in the rain, and that is my first tip to study real trees. Whether or not you're gonna be drawing from those trees, it really helps to be able to walk around a tree, a plant, a bush, and just look at what the shapes are in it. Look at where the shadows come from. Because what I see a lot of in students who are drawing is make a clump and then put a shadow at the bottom of it as if the shadow is coming from the clump. And the shadow is really coming from the interior of the plant. It's not like the bottom of a leaf shape. It may look like that in some of the drawings that I do and some of the simple coloring that I've taught before. But what's really causing those darks is the shadows underneath. There are some trees like this one that is all sticks. It's all twigs and branches. It doesn't have any leaves on it. And at some point I might do a tutorial showing how to draw a tree like that so that you can make it look like that. I just am fascinated with this particular tree. But for the most part, I like drawing trees with leaves on them a lot as well. This one is really beautiful when it blooms. But this is a park down near me. There's a lighthouse out here, great dog park, except for my dogs like to run down the waterfront and go visit houses. They have discovered that. So we don't go to this park anymore uh, off leash because they're a little bit on the crazy side, but it has lots of amazing big wrangly trees. And see, look, there's a good doggo that's not running off. Mine do the running off thing. Anyway, I did film some of the bushes. There's a little, you know, lighthouse keepers home here, a little historical building with some plants. And you can see there's different textures in each one of those plants. Some have big leaves, some have very tight textures. A restaurant nearby has these palms in it. And look at the leaves of the palm, they are light and the things that are causing the shadow is the interior of the plant. So we're not shading the leaves necessarily. Sometimes there's a little bit of shading going on there, but the darkest stuff is the, the things that are underneath. I did talk about pine trees in my last video, so I'll link you to that if you want more on pines. And I just stopped to film this on a corner near me to look at the different shapes. There's some leaves that hang down and you can make flouncy shapes that go down in order to create that kind of a look. Other plants have more horizontal types of leaves. And you know, this one might be more horizontal in the springtime when it's not raining. It's just been soaky wet here for weeks. There are ones that are, have pine needles, you know, evergreens that have pine needles. There's bushes, there's shrubs that have all different textures and learning to make different textures will help your drawings to become more interesting as well as you won't get bored drawing the same little scallop shape with a shadow, scallop shape with a shadow to draw 27 bushes. It's more interesting to make each one look like what it really looks like in your photo reference or in the landscape in front of you. So I wanna talk real quickly about making each plant look unique. When you're doing a loose sketch, it's not usually worth the time to make everything look absolutely unique. And sometimes a loose type of shape with some simple shading is really all you wanna do. But what's gonna make it start to look more realistic and be more interesting is if you look at the actual shape, 
of the plant. Because Mother Nature doesn't make a little round thing usually. It's often cultivated that way or trimmed that way by a gardener. And it's much more interesting when you make the shape look like the actual shape of the plant and pay attention to whether or not you're seeing a straight line across the bottom where the dirt is or whether you're seeing leaves coming out from it. When I sketch any kind of a bush shape, I use a very line. So I press hard and then lift up so that I don't get a solid outline around everything because nothing in life has an outline per se. And depending on the level of detail in your sketch, you may want more of an outline or you may want less. In the big drawing that I'm going to do, I don't want outlines around things. So I'm going to be handling each plant in a way to hide those. But this bush, I wanted to make it very dark because a lot of times the the bushes and the trees are the darkest thing in a landscape. So I started by putting some uh, some pencil on, smoothing it out a little bit with a soft blender, a dry blender. And then I used some liquid blender and a blending stump. That I'm trying to like basically bring all of these things together so I don't have a lot of sketchy lines and the blending solution will darken the pigment. But we're going to use a lot of that kind of same technique throughout this entire drawing to start to make each of the trees, each of the plants look unique because they all are unique. There's some where there are multiples of the same plant that are right next to each other, etc. But everything is has just got a different texture to it. And that's what I want to help you to learn to create in your drawings. At least think through it so that when you do your next drawing, you'll be prepared for what's ahead of you. When I begin a drawing like this, I try to set a dark area. And it's not always the darkest because that tree on the right-hand side is much darker than the rest of the trees. But this one is the second darkest and it does have some of the darkest color within it, the darkest value on the inside of the tree. So I started by sketching it in. It has branches that kind of point up and they're a little on the kind of poofy scallopy side, but I didn't draw the bottoms of each one. And I'm going to show you why that is. So I'm blending it with the soft blender first, the pastel blender. And then I'm going to put some blending solution in here and start to, you know, deepen and darken the entire tree. I don't have to do it evenly because this tree is going to have a lot of texture in it. But the goal here is to create shadows within shadows. Because a shadow is not generally going to all just be black and dark. So now that I have the blending solution on there, I can start putting in some shading that is behind those tips that point upward. Because usually the reason you see the brighter tips on something is because there's something dark behind it. But I'm not making just a line behind it. I'm making a variety of shapes behind it. So I'm leaving some of those light areas showing and then gradually they get darker as they get into the interior of the tree. And then the next light branch lifts up as you get those deep dark shadows behind it. And just learning to, and, and it does take practice, please don't think that, you know, just because I'm doing it here means it's easy to do. But if you want to make your drawings look realistic, be careful not to have lines around everything and just make shapes out of them. Because I'm making shadows within shadows here. This whole tree is very dark now. And I'm using my blending stump to just, you know, pull more of that pigment around so I don't end up with really bright, bright, um, very, very light types of highlights in them because that's not what the tree has. Now, when you get to grasses, lots of gardens and scenes have different kinds of grasses. This one has some very vertical grasses with white tips in in the uh, grassy area behind that um, I used an electric eraser to erase those parts. And then in the foreground portion, I'm adding darker color and you know even some broken shapes in there to try to create that vertical feel. This plant next to it is spiky in different directions. So I'm paying attention to what those directions are. And the plant is lighter than the tree behind it so I have to put shadows behind all of that in order to make them look realistic and, and make those lights pop. So 
then I want to start matching my darks. Some of the darks underneath of this plant are as dark as the, the tree above it. This little clump of bushes on this side is as dark as the, the dark in the tree. And I'm using that base that I set, that first really dark, rich black color to gauge everything else by. So if I squint at my drawing and I see that the, the tree is the only dark part, then I know I need to add more darks throughout the entire drawing. Scale matters. And a lot of it matters because that's how you're going to get the differentiation between the plants, but it's also going to help you with distance. In the foreground, I've got these plants that have very small textures to them, very small leaves, and they're very different in the way that I'm rendering them than the plant behind it, that dark bunch of bushes, because I want to create some light hitting those plants. The clearest detail is most often going to be in the foreground because it's closest to you so you can see it the best. And you're going to have your sharpest edges, your harshest differences between light and darks, because anywhere that you have a dark dark next to a light light, that's where the eye is automatically going to go. I wanted the, the path to be the thing that people walk into the drawing through. So I made sure I had darks and lights in the path. Now, you want some repetition in plants because, you know, you just have a lot of the same plants often in the same landscape. And you want to have that repetition, but you also want to vary it. This spiky plant, this, these grasses here, look a little bit like the one that's behind it, but the one that's behind it is lighter in color, kind of yellowed. And this one is all greens. It's, it's much darker. So I'm rendering it in a whole different way so that I end up with the two plants looking different. Just because, you know, you've got two things that are spiky, still pay attention to the variety that they both have. What, what makes both of them unique and different? Because you don't necessarily want to just recreate the same shape over and over. A lot of drawings that I see have the same bush like all the way down the entire sidewalk. You want each one to feel a little bit different. Now, throughout this drawing, I strategically deployed different erasers. This is a kneaded eraser. Sorry, my big hand is in the way because I wanted to make some leaves that were a little on the horizontal side, adding some shading in between them and then softening it with the pastel blender so that I don't end up with too many hard edges and then added some real darks using the blending stump and the uh, blending solution. And I'm trying not to make a pattern of them that looks exactly the same for all of those leaves. I want them all to look like they're clustered differently. Layering plants is also going to be important. Sometimes the plant in front is going to be darker. Sometimes the plant behind is going to be darker. And in this particular case, there are some grasses that go in front of these very light sort of wheat grasses in the, the photograph. And I want to have the darks in front of the lights. So I had to create a gray area, erase those plants, and then draw the grasses in front on top of them. I can add a little bit more in there for shading in between those, those light grasses, but I needed to get a lot of that done before I could add in some of the more sharp detail in the tall grasses that are in the very foreground. Now your distant elements, things that are far away, are going to be softer. And I tend to even soften them more than is in the landscape in front of me. I push that a little further to really indicate the distance because sometimes you'll see it and you'll think, oh, that should be a mid-tone. And you know, you could really get away with using something light. I'm using leftover pigment on my blending stump and drawing in the, the very, very faint leaves in the background. And then for the stems, I don't want them to be a sharp pencil line. So I'm actually drawing them with blending solution. And I'm drawing broken lines, not like straight full on lines, because you don't really want that kind of detail showing. And I'm going to show you why. Because there's several layers. There's a mid-ground in between the, the far distant soft lines and the viewer's uh, perspective. So I added the tree that's coming in from the left, just the branches, and used varying pressure 
to make them look realistic as I was just kind of pulling those in. Looking at the reference will tell you whether or not those branches need to be in front of or behind some of the bushes in that midground. And as I went to check the photograph again, I realized my branches need to come from down below. But look how they create depth because we've got the darker value along with the sharper edge in front of all that softness in the background. So if you wait to do your soft background till your drawing is all done, you're going to end up smooshing around any of those sharp lines that you want. Now leaving openings in canopies is important. You often don't see openings in things that are down on the ground, but when you're looking at trees and you get some sky behind them, you'll have some open areas. And I made a whole bunch of dark for this big tree coming in from the right, so I opened some of it with an electric eraser. All the supplies that I'm using, by the way, are going to be listed in the doobly-doo. So if you need a needed eraser, this sucker is under $10 US, and it is just a wonder and a glory of a tool. So once I have those openings in the canopy, I can start adding some branches in. And I'm not adding them like just big black marks across the whole thing. And I'm going to do some work on the branches to try to make the leaves look clustered around them so I don't end up with kind of weird shapes. I want to make them look natural. I use my dust brush to get rid of any leftover eraser bits or graphite on the paper and then moved on to removing the tape, <clears throat> calling this thing done. My voice is about done. So I want to say a big thank you to everybody who made my last pencil short go viral here on YouTube couple million views is insane. So I hope this pencil drawing has made a lot of you very happy as new subscribers. And yeah, that's about it for today. If you want a class on this, this drawing, please just let me know in the comments. If there's enough people, I will record one once I have a voice again, because I sound really terrible, don't I? I don't feel as bad as I sound. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great week, and I'll see you in my next video on Tuesday. Bye-bye.